Hello and welcome to the 3D Printing Canada Longer LK2 BL Touch Installation Guide. The Longer LK2 is produced by the same manufacturer as the AlphaWise U30 and in practicality is the same printer. Modifying it for a BL Touch creates an attractive low cost solution for a budget oriented auto bed leveling printer similar to the Ender 3. Let's go over the bill of materials for this modification. You require an EX1000 extension cable with a 1K resistor soldered between signal and 5 volts, a standard Genuine BL Touch kit, a 3D printed mounting bracket, some zip ties, and some tools a star head screwdriver, a 2.5mm Allen key, and a pair of clippers. Let's begin by carefully placing the printer on its side to gain access to the bottom electronics. Take your Allen key and undo the four screws holding on the bottom electronics enclosure. Let's take a look at the BL Touch extension wires. On the left here, we have a white and black Z min detection wire. And on the right, we have the wire that carries the power and the signal to the BL Touch. As noted before, we have to solder a 1K resistor between the orange signal and red 5 volt wires. This is because the BL Touch needs a signal boost to work properly. We sell these wires pre-soldered in the links below. Looking in the control box, you can see that we have an LCD connector cable and a 3-pin connector to the left of it. Take your BL Touch extension cable and plug it in so that the orange signal wire is facing the LCD cable and the brown ground wire is facing the furthest away from it. It should plug in nicely. Off to the right, you'll see a cluster of different connectors. Locate the one that says Z on it. It should be a 2-pin connector. This is where we'll have to plug in our black and white BL Touch Z min detection cables. Unplug that cable and get your Z-Min extension cable. Orient the cable so that the black wire is facing to the inside of the cluster, and the white wire is facing the outside. It should plug in nice and secure as well. While the printer is on its side, we won't be needing our Z-Min switch anymore, so let's get rid of it. Start by unplugging the 3-pin cable, then use your Allen key to unscrew the rest. We won't put the cover on the bottom of the printer just yet, but let's write its orientation. The next step will be assembling the BL Touch bracket. We have our BL Touch, the two nuts and two bolts that come with the BL Touch, and our bracket. Start by carefully unplugging the BL Touch wires from the bracket. The BL Touch connector should be fished through the cable management loop on the bracket. Then we can plug it back in. Insert one of the screws into the top of the BL Touch bracket. I prefer to start with the hole that's closest to the base as it's the hardest to access. Put on a little pressure with your screwdriver and then thread your nut on. Repeat the same process for the opposite side. Tighten up the nuts enough to hold it on, but not too tight. We don't want to break the plastic. Now we have to remove the front fan shroud so that we can mount our BL Touch. Remove the three screws holding it on. To mount the BL Touch, it's a matter of lining up the three screws that we just took off with the three holes in the BL Touch mount. Start with the middle hole because it's the hardest to access. Once you line everything up, it should screw in nicely. I'm using an Allen key screwdriver here to make things a bit easier. Now let's connect up our cables. Take the two ends of your BL Touch and the two ends of your extension cable and we need to match them up. For the power cable, orange is going to orange, Red is going to red, and brown is going to brown. For the signal cable, white will go to white, and black will go to black. I like to use a piece of tape or a sticker to hold these together because they will be moving slightly. 
Anything you can do to help the connectors stay together will be beneficial. The cable management system in the longer has an open shroud, meaning we can just slip these cables into the main shroud. Take your time with this, it'll take a few minutes. Use some zip ties to secure your cables and PTFE tube together. Adding some additional zip ties down the line can be helpful as well. After adding your firmware to the SD card, insert it into the back of the printer and then turn it on. You will see a progress bar as the firmware is flashed. If everything is successful, you should be greeted by the Marlin splash screen. Turn your printer off, remove your SD card one more time, and then insert it into your computer and delete the project.bin file. This is important because if you don't, it's going to load the firmware on every time you start up. It is also important to reinsert the card because the EEPROM where any settings are stored will be stored on this SD card. Now that everything is loaded, let's button up the bottom. Take your bottom casing and reinstall it. Notice now that the interface is quite different from the traditional AlphaWise or longer interface. We have an up, down, and select button. Start by selecting the select button that will take you into the menu and go down to temperature. Go down to preheat PLA and then preheat PLA. This will set the hot end temperature to 200 and the bed to 60. Wait until the heating is complete. Take your clippers and remove any excess filament that's leaking at the bottom of the nozzle during the heating process. Now for the calibration. Hit select, go to motion, then go auto home. The printer will home itself. Hit select again. Let's go motion, then up to move axis. Go to move Z, move Z by 10 millimeters, and then move Z down to zero. Now that Z is at zero, we can set the probe Z offset. Go back up to the motion menu, then the main menu. In the main menu, scroll down to configuration, then select probe Z offset. To calibrate this, take a piece of paper and put it underneath the nozzle and then constantly move it back and forth. Press the minus button and you'll see the probe Z offset start to go down and you'll also hear the motor starting to work as well. Keep moving the paper back and forth and keep holding the minus button until you start to feel the paper gripped by the nozzle. It should grip enough that the paper should feel rough but not so much that it can't move at all. After the probe Z offset is set, press the select button and then go down to store settings. Press the select button a couple times just to be sure. After that, the settings will be stored on the SD card. Let's go and auto home the printer one more time. Then in the motion menu, we can go to level bed to see if the bed leveling is working properly. The BL Touch probe in this firmware is set up for a five x five grid. This will give you a great resolution on many different surfaces. For instructions on setting up Cura with auto bed leveling, look in the description below. My final tip is that you can adjust the Probe Z offset live during the print if you go into the configuration menu while the printer is printing. We are happy to bring you affordable versatility with the longer LK2 and the BL Touch. And as always, we hope you enjoyed this guide.